11 minutes what did I do at 11 p.m. on July 31st, 2020, in Newport Ritchie. Being placed on the rest. For what, sir? Being placed on the there are 11 minutes that Marlo Jones says should have never happened. For me? Yeah, sir. Me? Yeah. And he says it took him two years to get that time back. But to understand how... It's a small town. We sat down with Jones and his attorney, Kevin Rossendino. In July of 2020, um, you know, we were peacefully protesting when we were attacked by a, a drunk man that came out of a bar. This video of that fight was first released to ABC Action News by the Newport Ritchie Police Department in August of 2020. In it, you see former officer Nicholas Rickus rush over to pull that man and demonstrator Stephanie Hinkle apart, and Jones runs over as well. You know, I witnessed this drunken man laying a, a, a hit on Mrs. Hinkle. And at that point, I step in between the two and I try to separate them. More officers and people begin crowding in, and Jones says he and Rickus spoke briefly. Thanks, what do we got here? Police body camera footage from another vantage point shows Jones talking to officers. And eventually, that scene is clear. The gentleman got arrested. Ms. Hinkle, um, you know, they talked to her, got her statement. She went home with her family that night, yeah. But exactly a week later, Jones says Hinkle's family called to say she was missing. We said we'll go file a missing persons report. Which brings us back to those 11 minutes. We're cooperating, we'll get along great. Ma'am. I didn't understand what was going on. I was there just to file a missing persons report. Then they're telling me I'm being arrested. Over the course of the video, you hear Jones ask why he's being arrested several times. Can I uh, please be told what I'm being arrested yeah, for? Yeah, he already, already told, told you, sir. And officers answer that he's being charged with felony battery on a police officer. When? Then, at three and a half minutes in, you hear another officer say this off camera. He had you on video last week pushing one of our officers during that altercation. I pushed an officer? Yes. The problem is body camera footage from that night doesn't show that happening. Somebody help! Marlo, come on, man. Dude! Yeah, it was shocking to hear her say that. At that point, I knew that something wasn't right. After a two-year legal battle on May 5th, 2022, a jury acquitted Jones on charges of battery on a law enforcement officer and for resisting arrest. It felt like justice because I felt like the jury and the judge got it right. And now, in 2023, Jones says he's pursuing further justice by filing a civil lawsuit in federal court. The 43-page complaint names the city of Newport Ritchie its manager, the mayor, the former police chief, a current police officer, and two former officers, including Nicholas Rickus, who claimed that Jones pushed him back in 2020. Those are the people. Those are the people that had everything to do with why Marlowe had to go through what he wanted. The suit claims that the charges brought against Jones can be tied to a history of racism and lack of police training in the city. It claims that history has been upheld by current and former city leaders and current and former city officers. And it also says that Jones was falsely arrested, wrongfully prosecuted, and subjected to emotional distress throughout the process of this case. The document also includes examples connected to each claim, such as this text exchange between the city manager, Debbie Manns, and city councilman, Jeff Starkey, from the day the verdict was delivered in Jones's trial. It's an exchange that we verified to be real through a records request from the city of Newport Ritchie. In the text, the pair talk about the case and how it wasn't looking good for the city. And they go on to say that Jones was no saint. At one point, Councilman Starkey says that Jones would never let the city live this down and that the verdict would empower Jones, to which Manns replied, I know, not happy. Since the suit was filed in March, attorneys for the mayor, Rickus, and the city itself have filed three separate motions to have this case dismissed. They all assert that Jones's complaint doesn't have any legs. And one motion includes this excerpt, claiming that the suit is largely redundant, immaterial, impertinent, and comprised of casually unrelated, scandalous, and harassing allegations. But in spite of this, the case still appears to be moving forward through federal court. I want the people that are in power in the city of Newport Ritchie to be held accountable 
because if we don't hold them accountable, then nobody else will. And Rossendino tells us they're seeking several million dollars in damages, which will give that accountability some teeth. Really, when you talk about civil rights, it's really a punishment, right? For a city like Newport Ritchie, a million dollars might be a punishment, but five million dollars really is a punishment. So we wanted to maximize the amount of the punishment to the city. And it's a push that the pair plan to take all the way to a jury. Never going to stop fighting. The only time I'll stop is when my heart stops. So a good day to go fishing? A sunny day and clear skies. Good job. <sighs> made it a perfect afternoon for Eric Cornell to go fishing for some catfish. Ready? We saw three yesterday right here. Right here, they're butter cats. They're about that big and the yellow belly. It's a pastime he's hoping to pass along to his daughter. She's 13. She loves to do the fishing thing with, with daddy. And they didn't have to go far to do it. All he had to do was walk out of his front door. We knew it was gonna flood, it's a flood zone. But, and they said we were gonna be safe. And well, I guess we were safe that much. <laughs> the Peace wow. River just yeah. touching his front yard. Someone's out there in a boat fishing out there. Following Hurricane Ian, the river rose to levels no one in this community has ever seen before. There's a street sign right there. Leaving multiple roads underwater. You're stuck on the road. And allowing Cornell to fish in the middle of the street. I did have a good, I had a good bite there. This is like making something positive out of a big old negative, you know? <laughs> like many, he was bracing for the massive destruction the Category 4 storm could bring. We thought the roof was going to come off the house. We did. We heard the whistling through the cracks. And it's a new home. Cornell's home is still intact, but he knows so many aren't as fortunate. I feel bad for the other people, the folks out there that had to get out of their home. And I know that home though, down there is flooded. But for all this madness, it feels good right now. In Bartow, Rebecca Petit, ABC Action News. Evidence markers everywhere. This is the aftermath of a shooting just north of downtown Lakeland, a drive-by shooting that happened in broad daylight around 4 in the afternoon. I, I counted 13. Dex, who lives nearby, was outside his home when the shots were fired. I heard pop. It was loud there, but it got louder here. And pop, 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 pop. Police say 10 people who were sitting and standing on both sides of the street were hit by gunfire. Eight are okay, but two are in critical condition. One was uh, shot in the abdomen, and the other one was shot in the uh, face or the jaw area. Now, Chief Sammy Taylor says Lakeland Police Department is focused on finding this car, maybe a dark blue Nissan Altima with tinted windows and a paper tag. And the four windows went down. It appears it was occupied by four shooters in the vehicle, and they started firing from all four windows of the vehicle. Taylor says investigators found shell casings of both handguns, even a rifle. They also found a felony amount of marijuana, meaning the shooting may have been drug related in a neighborhood deck says is full of kids. You know, these are babies. I lost a child. You know, it was uh, a bullet don't have a name. So, you know, anybody could have been hit. Another neighbor who heard the shots is Timothy Mullins. Things are just getting crazy. He can't say he's surprised the shooting happened here in a neighborhood even the chief admits has its challenges. I mean, what people do is what they do, you know, if you know what I mean. I don't like to say too much, you know what I'm saying? But you, you know what I'm talking about. Three officers are still on leave. Yo, My dad is on the floor. Do not hit him. And one man is facing several charges Months after this encounter with Lakeland Police on December 18th, 2022. I sat in the back of the police car and I cried, I cried. And I just thank God that they didn't kill me that night. 
A month after the stop, Antoine Glover spoke out, claiming he was asked to step out of his car because he had marijuana on him. I'm telling you, I have my medical marijuana license, sir. At the time, we also learned that the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the Lakeland Police Department were investigating this arrest. But in the months since, we haven't heard much about the status of this case. My name is Sarah Jones. I'm a criminal defense attorney. So we went to speak to Glover's attorney. And I just kept thinking somebody has to help them. Glover is facing charges of resisting arrest, possession of marijuana, and battery on an officer. Jones wants those charges to be dropped, but she says she's also preparing for a possible trial where she hopes to point out discrepancies between the police report and what she says actually happened that night. There was just a lot of what, what I call not passing the smell test. According to the five-page report, Detective Dylan Korn and Officers Anton Jefferson and Jason McCain were out patrolling in Lakeland just after midnight. The report goes on to say they spotted Glover driving without a seatbelt on and they signaled for him to pull over. But according to Jones, Glover's car had already been parked in the driveway of a family member's home. He sees the vehicle pull up beside him and it's an unmarked vehicle. So he's sort of wondering who is this stopping beside my vehicle. As they approach the vehicle, they say, turn the vehicle off. And so he's asking them why, but also turning off the vehicle at the same time. They don't really answer him as to why. Um, and they asked him, do you have any drugs in the car? Do you have any marijuana in the car? And he says, well, yes, I have marijuana. According to the police report, an officer then tried to remove a satchel from around Glover's neck that had the marijuana in it, but it claims Glover pushed him. However, Glover's attorney says her client actually raised his arm to remove that satchel and give it to the officer. He says he grabbed my arm and I'm telling him, you can have the bag, I'll give you the bag but the officer is sort of pushing him along the car. They're like sliding down the side of the car until he gets him on the ground. That's roughly the time that this video starts. Hey, stop oh, pushing my dad! And for Jones, this moment in particular shows the officers are at fault in this case. His hands are up, back, showing, hey, I'm surrendering, I'm not fighting you. And you see an officer just come punch him in the face. We showed this video to an independent policing expert and forensics professor at Florida Gulf Coast University, and he says that moment also caught his attention. What struck me is watching them, watching one officer take his fist and pound this gentleman in the head. And usually when that happens like that, boom, 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 it's that, that type of reaction is due to anger. Dr. David Thomas tells us the police report left him with questions such as why the punches weren't included in the write-up. Well, if you hit somebody and you use force and that level of force, then even on the force, it's, it's on the force continuum. So that means that you should detail why you did. It's also a detail that the Lakeland Police Department's protective action policy asks officers to document in their reports. Without body camera footage and with two conflicting sides of the story, Dr. Thomas says investigators will have to rely heavily on internal interviews and the cell phone video to determine if this stop should have happened in the first place and if this use of force was appropriate. It takes another supervisor, it takes internal affairs to be able to look at an incident and say, yep, this was reasonable and fair for the confrontation, considering uh, what that, you know, what the encounter was. But for Jones, the only reasonable thing in this case would be for the officers involved to be facing charges instead. I think there has to be something that says, in order to really, really, really have great policing, Everybody has to be held accountable.